everyone, welcome back to part 3 of the reflections and a sunset. I'm excited about this. I have a beautiful, beautiful sunset in mind. It's in Crosshaven and um, lovely rich colours with some boats in the water with some nice reflections of the boats and nice warm uh, colours. I have a sheet of MDF here, let me show you. It is, uh, now I'm not entirely sure about the size, but look at that. It's a fine, big, wide MDF board now, isn't it? And I've primed it three times. It's half inch board and I've primed along the edges as well also. Um, half inch MDF board. And I have lots of lovely colours laid out of my palette here, ready to go. Um, so yes, lovely MDF board. Now, there's something I wanted to show you. I have, now look at a beautiful bright sunny day outside. Look at that, isn't that lovely? Now, you can see the door to my window. I painted my shed yesterday and there's lots of little tiny splatters around the window. I has to be cleaned off. I didn't get around to doing it, but it's a lovely beautiful bright sunny day today. I was hoping to do an outside tutorial somewhere nice, but um, unfortunately I have to wait around the house because my windscreen and the car was cracked and they're coming today to replace it sometime so i need to kind of hang around the house um for them to come so unfortunately i'm stuck to my studio now i want to show you this um i don't know if i showed you already but i'm auctioning this off uh and i'm going to donate all the proceeds to cork simon uh, for the homeless this is a picture of well it's a kind of a nighttime impression of patrick's bridge and a homeless person sitting down with the cup out you see and a person standing looking. Now, I did this on canvas uh, with a knife. So it's just mostly done with a knife. A little bit of brushwork just here and there, but most of it is done with a palette knife. And it's just a nice kind of impression of a night scene. And there's just something about this scene, I think it really kind of hits home. Um, so I was thinking, you know what? Wouldn't it be a nice thing just to donate this to the charity? So I might, try and auction this off. I'll stick a nice frame on this or maybe a dark brown gold kind of a frame. That might look nice. So any ideas, any thoughts which could help me in that regard, I would be very, very um, thankful if you know anyone who, you know, who would like something like this. Um, please do let me know. But I am going to put this on my Facebook page, I think, and maybe just try and auction this off to the highest bidder. And I'm thinking perhaps just bid it on just put it on my page for maybe two weeks and at the end of those two weeks then just whoever has the highest bid um, sell it to them and donate everything to the charity. What do you think about that? Um, I think it's just a nice idea just to try and help out a little bit. So that's it. If you know anyone who's interested in this please do show them this. I will be putting this on my Facebook page as well um, and you know let's try and get as much as we can for, for a homeless charity. They really do need it. So that's it. That's a nice. Now we could try something like this as well sometime. Um, lots of work with the palette knife. I also have next to it another autumn scene. Uh, I did a few like this, but this was a commission uh, for a lady going back months and months and months ago. And I got this fair, and she said, "Look, I get back to you," and she never got back to me. So uh, that was months and months ago. So I'm just, I think I might just finish it as a tutorial sometime and just keep it myself or sell it. So uh, yeah, that'll be another nice one that we can finish. And also, I have another painting around here. Now let me see if I can find it. Ah, this is another commission I did. And it's a kind of a strange one. For Satchi. It's not my regular type of painting. But that's a painting I've done for someone as well and they haven't collected it either. And I can't seem to get through to them. They're not answering my calls. They're not replying to my messages. So that's another one. I suppose it's probably a good idea to take deposits on painting, isn't it? But I'm just too trustworthy and um, I don't take deposits. But I think I will have to start. I suppose it's probably good practice, isn't it? So that's another one. Uh, it's a logo of the Versace. He just sent me on a photograph. He said, could you paint this for me? I said, yes, I'll paint it. And it took me a long time. Kind of an impression of water in the background with the logo. Now, lots of detail in this. Took a lot of work, I can tell you. So this is another one I need to try and sell. If you know anyone who's, in, who's interested in this, it's going very, very cheap, believe me. Very cheap. So, yeah. It's a 24 by 20. 
or 24 by 18 I think canvas so there we go if you know anyone who's interested in those kinds of paintings please do let me know um, you know we do what we can to try and sell what we can and sometimes we just give them away really don't we just to get them out of our way out of the studio and make room for new paintings so um, that's the story I have tons and tons of paintings all over my studio and look you can see they're everywhere they're hanging up they're down by the corners and they're on the floor everywhere um, yeah it's, it's difficult to try and sell paintings every now and again but that's just the way it goes isn't it I'm sure you agree um, alright let's get cracking with this lovely painting here of a sunset the reflections part 3 um, we think of anything else oh yes I have a beautiful painting here of a wine glass which I'm going to show you I have this already recorded as a tutorial I don't know if you can see that now there we go look so I have this already recorded um, and edited I will upload this next week isn't that just lovely so I was sitting down one night at home messing around and I said you know what we'll do a little recording of a glass for a change something nice and uh, it turned out very well so I can't wait to show you this go on off and get some paints and canvas and stuff and get a cup of coffee most importantly and we'll have a bit of fun with this lovely sunset this may be a two part uh, tutorial because it's quite big so I want to take my time and do it nice alright I hope you understand again thank you so much for all your support you've been very very kind to me and um, if you haven't subscribed do subscribe because you're going to see some fantastic artwork here um, on this channel easy oil painting um, so go on I'll see you back here in just a moment don't go anywhere okay here we go you should see the picture on your screen there, isn't that gorgeous? Lovely, rich, warm colours and some lovely little reflections as well. Um, I have the camera zoomed right back now because it's a very wide board so the, ca the camera is very, very far back. Um, I can zoom in on the painting every now and again if you want, okay? I'll try and decide as I go along which is best. So here we go. This is... Um, this is it. Now let me just get this board down here there we go no I have a bit of masking tape across for the horizon line it's about I don't know it's just below half okay it, a good bit below half ways I it's it's not a good idea to put something across right in the middle of the canvas because it just doesn't work um, I either keep it above the center or below slightly either way okay I'll tell you my colors I have titanium white Naples yellow Cadmium yellow pale, some burnt sienna, a little bit of Van Dyke brown, or burnt umber, is there's that much difference. A little bit of black, any black will do. Some cadmium red, some alizarin crimson, and a little thalo blue, just for some nice rich colours. Um, one thing I wanted to mention to you was the paints that I use. Now let me just fix my microphone here because it's all it's all over the place. Let me see if I can get my microphone attached here properly to my to my jumper. No, I think that's a bit better. Um, the paints I use are Georgian. Okay, can you see that? Georgian oil colour for artists. And these are just kind of the student quality. They're not the professional quality. Um, but they're absolutely fine. That's what I've been using my whole painting career, my whole life, really. Um, this or... We also have Winton, which is Windsor and Newton colours. So those are the two colours that I have. I mix and match them, they're brilliant. Now you can use any decent quality um, paint. Any decent quality paint will do just fine. I also use from time to time some linseed oil, refined linseed oil. Um, you can mix a couple of drops of this in with a little drop of turpentine or you can use it just on its own as well as the thinners it slows the drying of the oils if you really want them to take a long long time to dry to be honest i don't really use this hardly ever i have this bottle a couple of years that will tell you how much i use it so um yes especially with mdf board this is already very very smooth so it will make it very very oily and greasy so be very careful when using that just use a little and i use just turpentine okay pure turpentine 
uh, this can be very very smelly it's very rich if you don't like that what I use most of the time is turpentine substitute and it's perfectly fine just for thinning we only use a very very small amount of this just for thinning the paints okay I have a tiny amount in here on my jar tiny amount and that'll do for the entire painting so when we're cleaning our brushes we're not going to be doing this inside the turpentine okay like you would with watercolors or acrylics I'm just going to dip it in once like this and then take some tissue and leave the paint soak onto the tissue you see and I'll do that then two or three times to clean my brush and it's fine then after that okay so that's just a little tip um, what I find with my students some of my students you see will they'll take their brush and they'll dip it like that and they'll swirl it around to try and clean it and their turpentine is ruined completely straight away so um, that's what I do okay just dip it in once take it out and then dry it on a tissue and clean it on a tissue rather so that's it now um, I suppose we could start painting couldn't we right let me just get this thing fixed up here let's get some brushes look lots of different flats uh, stubby brushes they're very important probably the best ones I have little stubby brushes but any regular flats will do and these are all synthetics look very soft synthetic just regular synthetic nothing special that's what I use I don't use bristle um, only for my fan brush of course but that's what I use I'm going to take my large stubby and let's get cracking with this sky now and have a bit of fun with this yes um, just make and um, keep glancing back and forward to the camera now to make sure you can see absolutely fine and that the colors are fine and everything is okay let's start off with a nice bright yellow here yes I'll dip my brush in my turpentine just once and then I'll dry the excess okay so it's not soaking wet but it's, it's damp it's good and damp and I'm going to take some cadmium yellow just a little because it's very rich and then into that I might take a touch of white just to tone that down very slightly and I might also take a touch of Naples yellow now I don't want this to be too kind of in your face and too rich so the Naples yellow will kind of tone it down just that little bit now you can see how wet that is it's probably even too wet so what I might do is take a tissue and just dry the bulk of the turpentine out of that and then go back into more paint again and that immediately now will thicken up the color see so let's try this now okay that's not bad and this MDF now is really really um, smooth very very smooth and the paint will tend to dry in a little bit more on the MDF than it would on canvas so bear that in mind so now let's just take a tiny bit of rich yellow just for the center and I'm going to go as far as there and then I'm going to start making it more orange as it comes out so I might add a touch of cadmium red to this and I'm just taking little bits at a time I'm not going right in with loads okay look little tiny bits and build up the color that you want and more yellow so we have a nice orange there now that's a little bit thicker but that's lovely that's a perfect color look isn't it yeah that's pretty much the color I was after and I'm going to come up here and you can see now it's a very very thin coat of paint I'm really kind of scraping along the MDF and I notice what a lot of beginners the mistake that they make is they put on too much paint too early on so everything then just becomes mucky and slippery and messy whereas I work with very thin coats of paint so in other words I kind of really spread my paint out now that's just my preference you probably have your own way of doing it but that's just the way I like to do it it keeps it much easier to control your your colors I find and it keeps everything nice and fresh and bright now we have a little touch of orange over on this side put a little touch there and then I'll just soften it very gently across you see very gently so everything now kind of merges together lovely and smoothly see that look at that isn't that lovely and we still have a bright spot then you see um, okay as I come over here I'm going to start picking up now with the same brush I'll start picking up a little crimson and put that in there and I'm going to take a little white as well 
so it's going into a sort of a pinky tone now they are there's still orange left in my brush but that's fine you see it's all mixing together making lovely subtle colors well warm rich colors really but they're kind of pastel colors they're not very in your face types of colors and then it goes, goes up to kind of a blue doesn't it now that's where we have to be this is where we have to be very very careful i'm going to clean my brush i'm dipping it in my turpentine look and i'm going to just do this to soak off most of the color just most of it it doesn't have to be spotless okay now the next part is very important when you're working with yellows and blues what you don't want is any green so uh, you might be tempted to just get a very light blue and go across with the blue what will happen is it will mix with the yellow and you'll end up with a mucky old green a turquoise green you don't want that so what i do is with a relatively dry brush i take some white like that and i take a touch of crimson like that now lots of white in this and what i'll do then is i'll bring this color across over the yellow first right over the yellow like this a little bit more white and then what i'll do you see now i'm just going into white here on its own i soften it down into the yellow very gently and even into the orange some of the orange is red look so now isn't the color going from a yellow to a kind of a slight pink isn't it let me take some more white add a little bit more white in there and then i'll gently soften that again down into the yellow merging everything together nice and gently now keep your brush clean dampen your brush again and give it another clean and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go from this very kind of a light pinky color to a mauve and just a very bluey mauve so let's take some crimson and i'm just be very careful with this now as well let's take some white and let's take a tiny touch of blue tiniest little touch because it's very rich it's a very very rich color that phthalo blue and again lots of white in this so we have a very bright mauve color now you see and again i'm not copying this photograph exactly not a hundred percent i'm going to kind of add my own little color in here and there but at the same time i want to keep it simple i want to keep it nice and simple for all the beginners out there and bring it across here soften it across into that mauve orangey color there so we have a lovely orange going up into a mauve and then soften everything together nice and gently so now what we can do is because we've separated the yellow from the blue we can start adding a more bluey color in on top can't we so again clean our brush and the tissue and let's take some white and a touch of phthalo blue it's not going to be pure bluey kind of a color um, there's a bit of a kind of a turquoisey blue up there so i might take a touch of naples yellow try to avoid cadmium yellow because that's very rich so a touch of naples yellow and now let me just try this okay that's a bit on the green side for me i'll try a bit more blue in this and more white again i take a tiny touch of thinners just a tiniest little touch and let me try that no that's not too bad so i'm going to pull this across and don't forget use plenty of white in these in in this color anyhow plenty of white will help soften the colors together and not be too conflicting so you can see there now that's softened into the mauve there just nicely hasn't it and very gently pull it down i'm hardly even touching the board at this stage now you see very soft and then you can go back up there and i'm going to go lots of white over in this corner so dry the brush pick up plenty of white and perhaps even a touch of naples yellow there and it gets very very bright now i made it a kind of a bluey green on purpose okay and then soften it very gently into the mauve so now you can see we have a nice variation of color going up from yellow into a nice greeny blue and then over to a richer blue 
Now I'm pulling all these colors together with my brush and when I get to the, the pink I'm going to just soften it across very gently, you see? There we go now. And we don't have any very dirty greens anywhere on our canvas. We have lovely fresh, lovely fresh colours, you see? Now does that make a bit of sense? So I'm going to sit back now and just take a look at what I've done. And I'm thinking the next job to do... Um, right, let me have a look here now. I might brighten that slightly, it's a bit dark for me. I might just take some white on my brush and... Just soften a little white into it here and there. Now because the MDF is so smooth, it kind of smoothens right in. So you'd have to do this once or twice. It's lovely though. Lovely, lovely feeling having a lovely smooth MDF board uh, rather than canvas. And let me just take a quick look now. Okay, yep, I'm fairly happy with that. That's the end of this brush I would think. For now. I'll put this brush down. And I'm going to take another kind of a flattish brush, but it's not a very pointy brush. It's going to be a worn, a kind of a worn brush. So something like this, okay? You see the way it's, fucking, it's very kind of splayed out and it's very, um, very worn. Now it's only a flat brush, but it's very worn. Let me get some colour on here. I'm going to start with some of the nice purples down here. We have some lovely deep purples, don't we? So let's make, up, make a little bit of purple. With a dry brush, I'm going to take a little crimson. Let's go into our blue here, okay? A little crimson. And we'll take a little bit of blue. Now that's gone very blue, isn't it? It's more of a grape kind of a blue. So I'm going to go more red in this. Because we have a lot of orange and yellow down here, I'm going to stick more on the red side of purple. Do you understand? So a kind of a plummy pink, a ready plum, basically. Very rich ready plum. And I'm going to just go straight into that. Now let's just try this. And you see what happens is, this colour then will pick up some of the oranges and you get lots of different sort of subtle tones going through. And I'm just basically now going to go on my own. I am looking at the photograph every now and again, but I'm not copying it exactly. I'm kind of, you know, I want to have a bit of fun with this. I want to make it my own painting as well. I might try a touch of cadmium red. So, as you see, it's a little bit redder, redder towards the bottom. And I'll soften them right out then as they come over to the edge, you see? Soften them right out. Let's try a bit more red in that. A bit more cadmium, that's a nice colour. And let's go up here. Now I know there's lots of yellowy colours in these, but I put in sort of the warmer tones first, okay? And it's basically just sort of flicking them across here and there, just in little clumps. You see? And it's softening into the blue here and there, so that's creating other colours as well. Isn't that lovely? Now I'll pull one or two, just sort of gently scraping it across here and there. And I'm going to soften some of this in as well. Now let me get some more of that colour. A bit more crimson. I'm just picking up tiny, tiny amounts of little colours as I go. I'm not going to dip, dipping right in and picking up loads of colour. It's only just a subtle change I want here and there. Nothing kind of dramatic. So that's one kind of a nice cloud. Now there's lots of clouds in the photograph. But look, you don't have to put in lots of clouds if you don't want to. I'm going to switch to a bit of a blue, a bluey colour for the top. So some crimson and some phthalo blue, and this time a bit more phthalo blue. Okay, so it's going that kind of plummy colour. There, look, see, just like that. And let's put a hint of that in here and there also. And I'm just kind of wiggling my brush, flicking it across here and there. And it gets quite dark then on top, doesn't it? There's a very rich kind of a bluey colour on top. So let's 
try some of that up there and I'm kind of going in circular motions as well every now and again because that creates the impression of the cloud you see so let's get some more phthalo and then a touch more crimson make it a bit more bluey and then add a little touch of that blue here and there also on some of these clouds because that helps balance everything out whereas if you have just one color here and one color there it might look a bit funny you want to try and introduce some of that color here and there on some of the um, clouds underneath as well you see just like this kind of soften them in here and there now I have to get a little bit of pink just for this one here okay again I'm very conscious of getting green down here I don't want to put too much blue down the bottom so I just took a little touch of red there just to neutralize that green there was a hint of green there if you see green just pick up a tiny bit of red and it'll soften the green out so I'm cleaning my brush now and let me just take a look now what we're going to do next I'll take my small stubby brush and I will use some cadmium red and I might even take a touch of yellow little touch of yellow on a dry brush and I'm going to come across here and soften some nice oranges just at the ends of these clouds just a little bit here and there perhaps take a bit more yellow and we have this very rich orangey colour just here and there by the sun don't we there we go lovely colour and I might even take a bit more and add a little touch of one or two just on this side just by wiggling it here and there now we can put in a hint of the sun as well if you like let's just take a touch of yellow rich yellow on its own and let's put in a hint of the sun just around here okay Now just do your best to get a little circle and then clean the brush quickly take a touch of white and I pop a touch of white just in the center just to give it a bright center and look it's hardly visible but it's there and what I'm going to do then is clean this well dip it in and give it a good clean on your tissue and I'm going to take some of the pinky color that we had earlier off my palette now it's fairly dry that's okay I only want just a hint perhaps a touch of white a touch of cadmium red and what I want to do is just go up here and put in some finer details of clouds um, maybe a couple around here and what I'll do next is get a soft brush now I'll just soften this for now and I'm going to pull everything across very gently I'm going to leave some of the tops of the clouds but I'm just going to soften the bottom ends in see what I mean so I'm not disturbing the tops of the clouds it's just the bottoms and I'm going to soften those into that orange underneath and it's making it lovely and soft and it's creating some lovely distance as well in the painting isn't it and give it a clean just make sure it's nice and clean all the time and then come up here and I'm going to soften some of these into the sky so I'm softening some of the brush strokes out but I'm still leaving a few understand it's not completely soft and we'll soften some of these look at these lovely soft colors we have everything mixing nicely together there we go 
Yeah. Isn't that nice now? So how's that looking? For our sky so far. Okay, let's sit back now and take a look at this. Actually, that's not bad now, is it? That's not too bad. I do feel that it's slightly kind of one-sided. Doesn't it? It kind of looks like it's slightly one-sided. I might add just one or two creeping in over there. Even with my small stubby brush, yes? Let's try it. Let's mix up a little warm colour. Let's take some crimson and some cadmium red and a small touch of the blue. And let's try, let's just put another little bit in here now first, just to see. Okay, yeah, that's, that's a good colour. Let's come over here and bring one or two just across here and there. Okay, just like this. And let's put another one under it here. And perhaps mm, a little one just popping across. And then we could even go to a more orangey colour and maybe pop one or two little flat ones just across, just coming in underneath. Okay, that'll do. Now I'm going to put a little shadow on some of those. So I'll take a little blue and a bit of pink, so we have a slightly plump kind of a colour. And on some of these, just pop some of that in here and there. And it just, it just makes them a little more believable. And then I'm going to soften again the bottoms of those in to my sky. Look, pulling them across into that colour underneath. Isn't that a lovely effect where everything sort of just disappears at the bottom and it softens into the sky? I think that's lovely. It's wonderful. There. So it's a little better now, I think, just having those one or two just on that side, isn't it? So, next. Next we have some lovely bright colours, don't we? Some lovely bright yellowy highlights from that lovely rich sun coming up. And let me get a small pointy brush. Any little pointy brush that you have. Um, right, let's... Okay, I'll try this one. It's just a regular small pointy brush. I'll dampen it very slightly. And I'm going to go into some white and yellow, I think. Or yellow and white. Now, should I zoom in for this? I'll zoom in very, very slightly, look. Just to fill the screen with the canvas. Is that better? Now, all I'm doing is taking some cadmium yellow and plenty of white. So it's a very bright whitey yellow. And with that colour, I'm just going to go around some of these with that thick paint. And it's just sort of hit and miss here and there, see? And that's just giving the impression of the tops of the clothes being hit by this very strong sunlight. Very, very simple. Very easy to do. Don't be afraid, you won't ruin your painting. Just try it. Just try. It's only paint. If you ruin it, you can fix it. Don't worry. So I have a little bit there. And I'm going to put some on the other side of these ones as well. Just a little bit here and there. And I'll mix up a little bit then and go over... Perhaps some of these here, look. Just giving it a dab. And I'm cleaning the brush now all the time after, after each one or two strokes, okay? Because what happens is, when you go in here, you start picking up some of these colours. And it gets muddy fairly quickly. So, I'm kind of cleaning the brush very, very regularly with this. Now, it's getting dirty already, so I'll clean the brush just quickly with the tip of the, tip of the tissue. Just on the, top of the tip of the brush. And I'll go in here and I'll go in more. Just put more a little dab of yellow in there. Clean it again. Pick up some more. Let's go. Um, now we do have a lot. There's actually some up here as well, isn't there? A little bit kind of. Let's just wiggle a bit across here and there. 
suggest some very bright sunlit clouds off in the distance and we can put a couple uh, more orangey ones then up around here you can see that can't you yes yeah you can see that I'm just double checking that you can see everything that I can see I want you to be uh, immersed in the painting and we have a nice kind of an orangey color now I'm being very careful with the blue here I don't want to touch the blue you see look uh, you can even add more crimson into this if you want because I really don't want any green up here and a little bit across here and perhaps a little bit on some of these see we're getting we're getting there slowly little bit along here and that's quite round here isn't it so I might just add a little bit into that make it more random you know more of a random kind of a cloud and I might even switch to my small flat brush now again so nice and clean little flat brush and I'm going to take some cadmium yellow with some crimson and a little white and have that kind of a salmony peachy kind of a color and just start wiggling some of that here and there now I'm going through the blue which I probably shouldn't but I'm being very careful I'm only giving one or two kind of quick brush strokes you see and there's a lot of red in this as well so I'm not blending it too much I think that's probably the secret not to blend too much so we have a lot of that kind of colour going on up there don't we and perhaps a little around here and there popping through those clouds and I clean my brush again go back into some yellow and some pink and pop a little bit in here and there on that I think I'll leave it at that then and just gently soften again soften those into that cloud just pulling them horizontal right across very gently see so it looks like then they're almost being kind of blown across the sky doesn't it it just gives it a bit of movement I think and soften those in just gently like so now we'll sit back and take a look if there's anything that's bothering us we can go back and give it more attention let me just sit back now for a moment and take a look at that I'm thinking a bit more um, maybe cadmium yellow and white just on some of those just to really pop them out you see just a little kind of couple of flicks here and there just to really set them off so <clears throat> why not come on it's our painting we can do what we like isn't that right um, I know there's a lot more orange in the painting but you know we can make it our own as well now let me add a bit of touch of orange in here and there look just with some cadmium red and cadmium yellow and again I'll soften them very gently together there now is that a bit better so we have some nice little highlights up there on the sky um, okay I'm looking around now and I'm just seeing what's going on I think I'll put in some darks with this brush actually um, I'll take some phthalo blue with some crimson and perhaps a touch of white just a touch small 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 touch of white and I might 
just put in a couple of lines kind of flicking across here and there um, perhaps one or two down here and you know this is the fun of, this is the fun about it just trying it and seeing what happens that's what I love about painting it's very spontaneous no one knows how it's going to turn out this could turn out very messy now for all I know and sometimes if you keep going at it it does turn out very messy but look if you don't try it you're never going to know and do you know let's let's have a bit of fun now I'm going to let me just see here now I'm just looking around I might add a little bit of lighter colour up here into those clouds just a little so let's get some of that orange again and let's just hit them with a touch of that orange here and there okay like so that's even enough clean the brush again um, I might add some darker colours in around here and there it's still not dark enough over here for me just not dark enough at all so some more crimson and taylor blue touch of cadmium red and I'm going to just darken some of these right down look with that lovely rich dark colour and put a couple in here and there because it's just not quite dark enough yet I feel I'll pop a couple in along here Yeah, that's a bit better, isn't it? And again, I'll very gently pull those at a slight kind of a flick. You see? A very slight flick down and off then to the left. Now, So that stronger colour I think just kind of lifts them out slightly doesn't it? Just that little bit and it really helps them pop. Now I think we leave it at that just for now. We can come back and add, I might add some more bright colours in here and there up on those clouds. Um, yep I think we will. I might soften just this area where they join here. Just soften it very very gently with a soft brush. Let me find the soft brush here now. I can use this very soft uh, synthetic, okay? I just want to soften that just a little bit more. So I go down at a slight angle. Give that a nice soft effect down there. That's better. Just to blend it in that bit more. That's all. Okay, that'll do. That is our sky pretty much finished for now um, you could add some little you could add some little highlights here and there and I probably will start adding some highlights here and there very very soon but I think I just want to keep it simple for now I leave it as it is it's just a nice simple sunset let's move on now to some of the hills off in the distance there are some lovely hills off in the distance isn't there um, we'll just try and get those in, yes? So I'll just use my old rough brush here. I'll dampen it very slightly and I'm going to go for a nice warm colour this time. I'm going to go for some crimson and some cyanide. Now let me just have a look at this first. Now you can see, I want you to see me mixing here now, okay? Now, there we go. Some crimson and cyanide, burn cyanide and let me see um i think i'll try that for now let me just see there okay that's not bad just under the sun i'm going to put that in here just kind of wiggle it along under the sun and then it comes back up the other side you see very slightly then i'm going to start adding a touch of burnt umber or van dyke brown whichever one you have 
and then make it more brown. So put a good bit of brown into that there now. And you see, I've been very, very rough with this. So just even one or two trees here and there. Because this is very much in silhouette, isn't it? Now take some more brown. As we come over to this side. And again, be very careful when using brown next to the orange and the yellow because it could turn green. So add plenty of crimson into the brown. And that should neutralize any greens on your canvas. There, so you can see, now I'm taking a touch of black. You can see it goes from a nice warm center to a very dark color just on the edge. And then it's pretty much dark all the way across, isn't it? So let's take some black and plenty of crimson. Now I'm taking a lot more crimson and red into that because the black was hitting the orange and going green, you see. So I'm taking lots of pink in this. Now I'll give my brush a quick clean because it's getting very muddy. So look, give it a quick clean, take everything off and go back into some red perhaps. A little hill that comes along like that. And we have another one. I'm going to make this one more purple actually. So I'll take loads of cadmium red, touch of phthalo blue. And I'm going to go up here and make this nice, very dark blacky kind of a purple hill there. Just like that. There we go. So now everything is nice and soft together, isn't it? And what I'm going to do is clean this brush, okay? Just put, put that down for a minute, give it a clean, put it down, and take your clean small flat brush, or any small flat brush, even a pointy brush, and I'm going to put a very bright colour in here. So I'll try some cadmium yellow with some cadmium red. And I'm going to start with that colour, put that very bright, rich orange just in under the sun, okay? And soften it into the colour underneath. And then I'm going to go brighter again. I might take some cadmium yellow with a touch of white. And I put that in again, just under the sun. There we go. And you don't, you don't have to soften it too much. So now you can see we have this nice kind of sunlit effect, don't we? I bring it over now just slightly, a bit more here I think. So you can see now where the sun is kind of coming down there, isn't that gorgeous? And you could even go, um, even with a touch of cadmium yellow on its own, and perhaps dot a little bit of that in here and there, to suggest the sun catching some of the trees and hills off in the distance there, way, way off. And that will do. I'm thinking perhaps I'd put a touch of red in over on this side, just where the hills are catching some of that light. Okay, that will do fine. Put that down, take a look. Let's sit back, take a look at this. Yeah, that's quite nice, isn't it? I'm, uh, I'm quite happy with that. I'm still not 100% happy with my sky. I'll be very honest, I'm just not happy at all. Now, you might say it looks fine, but I am just not convinced with the sky. It's just not working for me, I'll be honest. So I'm going to go back and do some more work on the sky. So this is what painting is all about. If you don't like something, you go back and you change it, you see. I'm going to take my small brush and get some cadmium yellow, lots of white, and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to just start putting in some of those nice bright highlights. Because I think it needs that. I think it needs that bright colour. Just here and there. And I'm going to make them more sort of in your face, you know. They're, they're just more of an impact. I just think it does need it. And I'm going to put some 
let me just mix a very orangey color I'm going to put some here and there on some of these um, one or two say on the front of that and I'm going to put one or two on the front of this one also it's just I, I feel that it just needs more more kind of pop to understand so I'm just going at this now there's every chance that I could ruin this now but look so look let's go for it that's what it's all about isn't it a little bit of a brighter colour there um, okay I'm going to mix a nice dark plum there we go a nice ready plum colour and I'm going to go in here with that ready colour a bit more red lots of cadmium red in this and let's go up here with it there and that's the fun thing about painting it it's going to change it'll keep changing as you go you just you have no idea how it's going to turn out until it's finished and you probably can know yourself when it's finished as well and let me just soften some of those now let's just soften some of these together and see what happens yeah that's that's a little bit better I think it just has more of an impact doesn't it I would say and I might even soften some of these just very gently just soften them in here and there okay and very very lastly I think I might just put a very bright highlight along some of the edges of these here so lots of white and yellow and just along underneath some of those I think that's just kind of helped it slightly would you agree okay um, let's have a look and see how we are doing I think I'll call this part one finished yes I don't want to overwork the sky uh, part two we'll have the water with some nice reflections coming down some lovely boats in there so yeah I think we'll save all that for part two so don't go anywhere thank you for joining me i hope you've enjoyed this section at least and um, i look forward to painting these lovely reflections in part two so don't go anywhere i'll be right back